dear people of God, on this 13th Sunday, we are reminded of our mission, mission given and mission confirmed. It's a critical moment for us as well as it was in the life of Prophet Elisha and in the life of the apostles that were with Christ to commit fully our participation in this mission. We are taking on this mission as participants in God's plan, not merely as a mild wish, not merely as some good idea that is good to consider, but as a mission of discipleship. And so as we carry on this mission, we need the best practices of discipleship, best practices of evangelization. Prophet Elisha, we have heard in the first reading, was called by Elijah after God's command to go and anoint him. He received this commissioning from Mount Horeb. God sent him to go and anoint two kings and then anoint Elisha. He found Elisha in the, guard, in the fields working. God is saying that people he calls to mission should be busy people, people who are hardworking, people who take on, take on his mission not because they had nothing else to do. So God does not take in idlers. We have all to be hardworking. So God picks Elisha, Elisha from his daily work. He was a son of Shaphat, who was a rich and prosperous landowner. From the fields, he takes him and sets him apart for work in the kingdom. And this is shown by the throwing of a clock by Elijah over Elisha. And when Elisha saw the clock of Elijah landing on him, he understood what it all entailed, that he was called for mission. Like our Lord in the Gospel, who resolved to go to Jerusalem to fulfill the mission of redeeming the world, also, Elijah, Elisha made a resolution to follow Prophet Elijah, but he asked for permission to go and say farewell to his family, which he did very quickly. And the actions he does are a full explanation of his resolve. He slaughters the oxen and burns the plows he was using and uses them to roast the meat and he gave away the meat to the people he had employed and that was the end of it. He broke off from the old way of life and made a resolve to take on a new life of following prophet Elijah, period. This is what we also need to do, to break away from the old way of life and take on the way of the mission for which we are called, which mission we are already confirmed in. 
on the day of baptism, after being anointed with chrism, we received a white garment. That is the cloak of Christ that he bestowed on us, and in it we received the dignity of being prophets, kings, and priests. We were confirmed by the chrism and were vested with that dignity. So we are in the world with full resolve to bear the good news, never to turn back to the old way of life, but to take on the new way of life that is demanded of a disciple, of a witness of the good news. So the resolve of Elisha helps us to renew our resolve to be purely for discipleship in the world. For this is what our freedom, as those anointed for Christ, requires of each one of us. And when we are on mission, as Christ our Lord was heading to Jerusalem, we meet obstacles. One of the obstacles that Christ met was the meanness of the Samaritans who could not receive him in their area, seeing that he was passing through their area to go to Jerusalem. The team he was with, which included John and James, the two brothers, was displeased about this. And we have heard what they said. Lord, do you want us to call fire from heaven to burn these people? Mission can be difficult. We, you can be rejected. <laughs> they can reject you, even from within your family. People in your family can reject you. When you gather for come 4th July, if you say, please, people of God, before we eat, let us pray. Some people may say, ah, oh, for what? That one. Do you call fire from heaven to burn the family? It's risky. How many funerals are you going to have? Those are way too much. So the Lord rebuked them, saying, this is not what you are empowered for. A disciple, a witness of the good news, should not end up contradicting himself while on mission. If you are a proclaimer of good news, do not turn into a proclaimer of sadness and tears and destruction. The power we are vested with in that garment is not meant to be a power used, to be used for destruction. It's a power to be used creatively in the freedom of the spirit that St. Paul has mentioned in the second reading. This power we are given must be used creatively to serve, to free people, and to invite God, people to God's friendship in a friendly manner. So as we do mission, let's not take recourse to calling fire from heaven. You remember when Elijah called the fire from heaven, what followed? And at some point, even John the Baptist was threatening fire from heaven, and people began running away from him. And you know when fire descends, what happens? If fire descends on the congregation, then you end up with no congregation. When fire descends, you are not allowing fellow sinners a time to convert. When fire descends, it might also end up burning you too, because you are with them. Total destruction. Preacher and congregation, gone. 
ashes. When you call fire, you victimize yourself, and it's a disaster. And moreover, even the preachers are no better. We are all sinners. So you better not call fire. The principle of Christ as evangelizer is no aggression, no fanaticism, no revenge. So we shall not bring simplistic solutions to problems or obstacles we meet on mission simply because we are empowered. Let's use the gospel power we are vested with on the day of baptism to redeem, to bring about life, to remain creative, to maintain that path of mercy, and to show people God is a redeemer. This is the freedom we are given, as St. Paul has mentioned. Our freedom is not to cause destruction. Instead, it should be for the service of God's people, to bring about newness, to free people in God. We pray God helps us to understand our mission and that we may generously give of ourselves what we have with full resolve of mission for mission without a divided heart, taking the plow and then looking back. That's not good. Let's come forward to engage in mission without unclear motives. If we are looking for a soft landing on mission, forget. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So comfort is not there. Sacrifice is abundant. And it's out of sacrifice that the best comes out. The Lord be with you.